Welcome to Model Engineers Laser. My name is Ed and this is part two of our series on building the uh, five inch gauge 1831 diesel shunter. Since part one, you will notice that the frames have now sprouted the row of holes along their top edge. And this is where we will mount the angle iron, which forms both the longitudinal strengthening and also one of the mount points for the foot plate um, and then subsequently the bodywork. Eagle Eyed will notice that I actually managed to miss one of the holes. Um, I've now modified the file for the laser cutting so the next time we cut these, the next person who comes to build one, um, these holes will already be in uh, instead of having to jig drill them the same as I did. I've also tweaked it so that the holes around for the horn slots will also be cut uh, the next time, which will make life a little bit easier for the next person to build. As I said in the last video, the next job that we're going to tackle is the fabrication of the uh, horn uh, guides which fit uh, in the U slots and carry the axle boxes and the axles. And these come as a laser cut fret of parts. Um, I'll just zoom in on that so that you can see them a bit better. And this is what you get in one of the frets and there are eight that go into making up the chassis. You've got the main U section, which is obviously the mounting flange, which goes to the frames. Um, the round holes are the ones that I've now added to the frames and that's where it all rivets or bolts together. The square holes, that's where these ribs go in when we silver solder the fabrication. This piece on the top here is the top plate. The long slot here goes on that slot. Uh, the two little slots in the side are where the top gussets go and the cutouts in each side go to the tops of these pieces, which are the left and right cheeks. Uh, that's what the axle box works against. Um, they also have long slots, which fit the long tabs in the sides and the short slots, which fit into the gussets. This piece goes across the bottom. Now, initially, um, those slots go to those on the bottom of there. And this one here actually loops around that. Eventually, once we fabricated it and it's all in one piece, we're actually going to be cutting this away here. But we leave it in one piece to maintain the strength whilst we fabricate it and make sure that the legs of the U can't close in or spring open at any point. I have made a few little tweaks to the laser cutting file, which um, will become live the next time we cut them. So all future ones will look very, very slightly different to this one but fundamentally they're still the same. I've relieved this a little bit in the middle just to take some mass out to help with silver solder in the fabrication. I've also tweaked these um, tabs on the gussets a little bit just to make life easier for them to, to slot together. We, we found out that the only way to assemble this, as I'll, as I'll go through shortly, is to snap the top in with its gussets and then the sides have to be sort of fed in around and, and snapped up and getting the gussets to go in is a little bit of a fiddle so we, we've just tweaked and they'll still need a little bit of manual fitting it's, it's, it's not going to be a, um, a, a cut it off and stick it straight together there is a little bit of work to do. The first job is obviously to separate all the individual components and here's one I made earlier. I've separated them just by taking them down the workshop, putting them in the vise with some aluminium soft packing jaws, a bit of angle iron, 
aluminium angle on and I've just cut through all the tags with the um, six inch Eclipse Junior Hacksaw. Nothing special to it, just cut through all the tabs. You can see the remains of them there. And at this stage, I haven't bothered uh, yet with um, filing up all the stubs. That is literally all I've done. I just cut them apart. So the first bit we're going to work on that way is the top and its two gussets. And I'll tell you what, let me just zoom out because there we go. I might struggle to do it in one piece. There is the frame mounting the U-shape. The first thing we've got to do is just on the sh on sharp corners like that one. You, you always get a little bit of a, just a little bit of a tag left. So on these, you've got a little tag on each corner that needs to be filed off. So that's the first thing to do. And then just double check that that slots on there nicely like that. Doesn't want to be tight, but also it doesn't want to be really, really loose. So that's quite nice on there. I quite like that. And then we do the same with the top gussets. And they should, oops, that one's a little bit loose. I got a bit carried away with that one, but it won't, won't hurt. So there's one, two of those. That one's a little bit more snug. And then that piece will slot. Oops, there we go. Once they're all, all three pieces are involved, yeah, that's a little bit tighter now, the three pieces together work together and hold it and there you go backs of those just sticking through there um, we'll file those off after we've soldered it and you start to see that lip there is what's going to fit um, against the top of the openings in the frame and locate the, the horns in the frames so now that we've done those these will get filled with silver solder um, in the process of fabricating it and even if they're not it won't actually hurt that's not a working face um, there you go so the next thing we're going to do we're going to work on getting the two side pieces fitted to the main plate working now on the two horn cheeks the working faces um, they've just had a, a tidy up i've took the most of the uh, tags off the ends um, Again, right angle corners, just need a touch with a file just to take them off. Don't take a lot, just run a file over it, get rid of the edge there because it'll stop things going together and it'll hold things apart. Um, these slot in the sides and you have to introduce a little bit of clearance so that you can actually assemble them. The first thing to do is just on the top there, uh, I've just filed away a little bit of a uh, chamfer on there so that that helps it go in whoops go in and bend round and then the other thing to do is on the top edge of this slot I've just gone in with a needle file and just in there just introduce a little bit of an angle that way that that way is um, if you imagine that's vertical this is the top we are higher on this side and angled that way. I haven't took any metal away from the inside. That's still where it was laser cut. I've just cut that way from the top. And that means you can slot that in there. It just gives somewhere for that corner to go. Oops. As you swing the two pieces together. So we locate it in the top there. In it goes and snap it into place, just like that. And then we do the same on the other side. Obviously the clearance is on the other side of that one. And then that will, that one just goes and snaps in there. You can see it's starting to take shape now. Uh, so the last, no, not the last job. The next job is to get the four gussets put in. They are a fiddle. They will take a little bit of um, persuading just to put some clearance in so they can get in. We'll do that next. 
Okay, so now we're working on fitting the gussets. Um, been together a few times, it's starting to work a little loose now, but you can see I've got the first one in there. Uh, those are a real fiddle to do, those are. And then the second ones, it's, you have to try and get it to snap together in three dimensions. And that, let's take that one out. You have to get that in there and hold, hold it in place. And when you get it right, it will go. It does go. There we go. So it just snaps in like that. And then the other side the same. Um, get that in there and just get it started. And you can see how I've filed that away a little bit to get it to... Just get it to locate. that one. I got that one a little bit too loose. Got carried away on that one. Um, and then that one as well. There you go. So those are all, they're trapped now, or they will be in a minute. They can't actually escape. There's no way for them to come out. Even that one, which I can't carry away on, that can't actually come out of there. There we go. So the last piece to do is the piece that goes on the bottom there. And that will lock everything in place so it doesn't move while we solder it. So I'll go and do that next. That's the last bit. Fettled and ready to go. Didn't have to do very much with this one, thankfully. Working, I get really bad cramp in this thumb muscle in here and both hands working with these little bits. So it's took me ages to do this. But anyway, you can see the two tabs on there go in those slots. And these two slots lip over there. So this is, this is snug because it does hold everything together so just need to manipulate it into position oh, there it goes suddenly goes when you get everything in the right place there we go and that's that's your horn I say with the, the cramp that I get in my thumb muscles it took me a little while to do that but there you go, it's ready for silver soldering now, so I will go and see about setting that up ready for doing and see if I can get some video. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get the video of doing the soldering, we'll see. I've only got one camera and I know it might get in the way a little bit. Let's see how we get on. I don't know if he's going to work or not. I might just end up in my own way, but we'll see how we go anyway. But we're in the workshop now and I've got I've got my two fire bricks set up. I've just sat them on top of my vice. Gets it up to a nice working height. Um, so we're going to set this all up. We're going to use Easy Flow 2 or uh, its equivalent in the modern age, which is uh, 455 silver solder and Easy Flow 2 flux. Uh, there we go. There's the flux. Johnson Matty, Easy Flow 2. I did try the ready mix stuff once, didn't get on with that very well at all. I found that to be full of lumps and not a lot of use, but I haven't been on the shelf that long either. And then the solder, there we go, 455, which is 55% silver. That's the melting point, 630, 660. The same as the old uh, Easy Flow 2, which I believe you can still buy abroad, but is now banned in the UK due to its... Uh, cadmium content and you can see I get mine from CUP alloys I get my flux from them I get all my solder from them um, soft and hard solder so we just mix the flux up into a paste I'm sure everybody knows how this goes I just use an old paint tin which yes did get too hot one day and an old screwdriver there we go right now Try and do this. I've always been liberal with the flux. It does make it easier to clean up. Or well, I think it does anyway. Um, I think I'm going to get in my own way a lot doing this. Filming it, but let's see how we go. So I've always been liberal. Just wedge it in the joints. Some of them are 
we know some of them are loose see that one springs open there so that's great for getting the flux in behind it sort of trowel it in there you go it's it squirts out and get it all another one that's a little bit loose so we get it in there i'll get the rest of that done and then i'll bring you back getting it properly fluxed right in there you can see i've just popped the bottom off just to help because that means i can spring that out like that and make sure we get flux right in the joints i don't know if you can hear them but we've got blackbirds nesting in the bush by the workshop and uh, there's a magpie obviously going after the eggs and needless to say the blackbirds are none too happy about it and they're kicking off he's getting a right earful i don't know if the camera can pick it up that's all fluxed up now bizarrely on the camera it didn't actually look like there's much there but there is so now what i'm doing i've just got some side cutters and some bit of the silver solder i'm just cutting off short lengths which i'm just dropping in there there you go that'll just help just placing a few bits around we're going to chase it around with a oops i made that a bit too long that'll be all right there we go that's in there Blackbirds have gone quiet. Magpie must have got the idea. There we go. So we can do this without pinging them across the workshop. There we go. We'll put a bit in there. They'll probably move when I heat everything up anyway. Oops. Ow. Well, I'm never going to see that again. That's on the workshop floor. Right, so we're ready for soldering now. Um, let me just grab, there it is, stick of solder that I used yesterday. So, I'm going to need a somewhat bigger torch for doing this one. Uh, I'm using my sievert equipment, there you go. Just a handpiece propane regulator. This is a 2238. No, it's not. It's a 2941. 2941. There you go. You can't do this with a plumber's torch. You are going to need um, a bigger burner for this. I think I will move the camera away before we melt it. Let's see how we get on. Move the camera and zoomed it in. Ooh, right. I usually like to have one of the lights turn off at this end of the workshop when I do this, so it's all in darkness, but there you go. The camera won't pick it up if I do that. Let's see how we go. I'm just going to go around and give it a gentle preheat first, just to dry the flux off. I would imagine, once I start really warming this up, all you're going to hear is the burner and not me, but let's see how we go.
Just like that. A bit warm now. While that cools down, um, I'll probably have a look at doing another one, um, getting that ready for soldering. See that 2941, that nozzle is 28 mil, 7.7 kilowatts. Uh, and you can see how fast it did it, but you are not going to do that with a plumber's torch. You are going to need some proper brazing equipment to do that job. So we'll let that cool down uh, and then we will chuck it in the acid bath to clean it up. There we go, we're all cooled down now. Looks a bit of a mess now because uh, the way the flux has um, done its job, burnt and everything else. So we'll give a clean up and this is my pot of uh, brick and mortar cleaner or brick and patio cleaner or whoever happens to make it names it. Um, but that's basically what it is. Bought mine from, uh, I think this lot was Wix. I always forget what the active component is. It's an acid. Um, I can never remember which one it is. So it obviously needs to be handled with care. Um, but for doing this kind of job, it is actually really good stuff. Uh, and it'll bring this up a treat. Um, it won't take very long. This isn't brand spanking new. I've used this a few times. You can see the uh, the dirt that's floating around in the bottom of there actually um, so I think what we'll do is we'll chuck it in there for half hour or so go on look at that there we go we'll put the lid on for safekeeping let's see what we on there you go five to four I'll leave it there for half hour or so and then we'll get it out and we'll have a look and see what it's like a little bit longer than half hour, I was busy doing another job. Let's have a look. It doesn't look much different, but... Give it a shake. And it's starting to, oops, starting to clean up. Um, Needless to say, I am not touching that with my hands, but you can see that's not far off being finished. I think we'll give that a little bit longer. Probably because it's used, if it had been new cleaner, I think we might have been done by now, but... You see how the silver solder has run through those. Basically, it'll go wherever the flux is. So, provided it's well fluxed through the joint, it will clean up. There you go. I'll give it a little bit longer, right? Keep the lid on, for safety's sake. Just over an hour in the acid bath. Let's see what we've got. Got me pliers. Yeah, it's all just rubbing off now. What you really need is an old toothbrush. That would get in there and give it a good scrub. Get it off lovely. There we are. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm, I'm going to call that a do, I think. Um, so I will go in the house now, give it a rub with um, green scotch bite. And... Give that a clean under some hot soapy water. There you go, green scotch bright. Um, hot soapy water to clean it up. And then that's that done. And here's some I made earlier. 
There you go, they're all soldered up, cleaned up. Um, that was the one I did last, so it's a bit cleaner. These have just oxidised a little bit because they've been sitting around. Uh, the back's cleaned up, so they will go into the frames. Um, yeah, so I will crack on and get the rest of those done. We've got about 25 minutes of video now, I think. So that's plenty enough for this one. I will get them all finished off. I'll possibly even go on and drill the holes in the frames and get them fitted. We shall see. Ready for next time. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And if you hit the little bell symbol, you'll get a notification of when the next video comes out, which at the moment could be part three of this, or it could be another part on the Jack video. Don't know yet. We'll just have to see how it pans out. Thanks for watching. See you later.